There's a light in the sky, rising in the air. There's a feeling so strong. It's time to light the fire, like a bright shining light. Hello and welcome to the House of Wellness. I'm Luke Darcy and it's great to be with three of my all-time favourite people, <laughs> Joe Stanley, <laughs> Rachel Fintz and Luke Hines. Thanks, mate. I'm glad we're your favourites. As yeah. genuine and heartfelt as, as I else. can be. Yeah. Good to see you. <laughs> hey, we're blessed to live in a pretty lucky country, I think, uh, Joe. and sometimes you can lose sight of how fortunate we are, but it is nice to have a bit of gratitude at times as well. Oh, absolutely. Actually, I exercise gratitude every morning. First thing I do when I wake up, and it's always, you know, that my family are healthy and safe, but today I express gratitude for you lovely people. Oh, thanks, Joe. We're so, so lucky important. to come here and do this. It's so important, isn't it? I'm yeah. the same. Every time I lie in bed, as soon as I open my eyes, what do I have to be thankful for? For me, it's those simple things. Mm. Fresh air, sunshine, to be able to walk outside of home and not sort of fear for our life. Mm. You know, mm. those simple things. Yeah, I feel grateful all the time. You know, have a uh, happy family, warm house to live in. Uh, and it is Sleep Awareness Week this week as well. And we're looking at sleep disorders and ways to combat them a little later. But first, we went to well and truly upon us, it's an important <laughs> time to remember that thousands of Australians are sleeping rough as we speak. Yes, Stas, the homelessness rate has risen in the last five years with an estimated one in 200 people without a safe roof over their heads. And recent figures have shown 31% increase in women over 55 mm. are experiencing homelessness. And Rach, there are different kinds of homelessness. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And some yeah. people are living in overcrowded, inappropriate accommodation. They're mm. sleeping in cars, crashing on other people's couches. And as you said, mostly common in the young and the elderly. Mm. With 7% experiencing homelessness, forced to spend nights on the streets, in parks or in makeshift tents. Well, Heinz, a warm blanket is vitally important to protect them from the elements at night, which is where a group of Good Samaritans in Sydney are doing wonders to help give some warmth to those being left out in the cold. <laughs> it's a Tuesday night in Sydney CBD and the temperature is expected to drop to below six degrees. Rather than stay in and keep warm, Paul Scheel is packing his car to the brim with donations and preparing to spend another night with Sydney's homeless community. These are hand-knitted beanies, a full bag that someone donated to us. We wish we knew who it was so we could thank them, they're so beautiful. But often people just do it anonymously just to help out. They don't leave their name so we don't really know who to thank, but we're very grateful. For most of his life, Paul has tried to help people, but after three and a half decades working for a big charity, he decided that he could be more direct. Well, I got disillusioned by the fact that there's so many overheads and they're so massive, and I wanted to get out and do what, what I've loved doing for more than 35 years, is just to serve the needy, serve the marginalised. Three or four times a week, Paul and his friends will pack up the car with whatever they can gather and head to the CBD to give it away. They call themselves Blanket Patrol, but they're not a registered charity. The group organises itself on social media. They use their own cars, their own money, and their own time. We're crowdsourced. Everything's donated. We don't own any buildings. We don't have any resources. We don't even have a bank account. Every single donation that we receive goes immediately to somebody who needs it. The local real estate agency has a box for donations. The cafe down the road donates the day's leftover sweets and a nearby church collects bread. Blanket Patrol is responsible for picking it up and taking it to where it's needed. Thank you so much. In a way, it's a dream come true because for years I'd hit my head against a brick wall trying to get things done in a big organisation and here, we're free to do it how we want to do it. Sure, I take my own car, my friends come and help me, but the reality of it is we're out doing this. We're out on the streets doing what we want to do, what we love doing. Uh, South South got the two points just within the following week they play manly mate, they'll smash them. A few years ago, Gav was living in an apartment across the road from the patrol setup. After a bit of bad luck, he found that he was homeless. He spent some time living on the street, and while he now has a roof over his head, the cost of keeping himself indoors at night is making it hard for him to get ahead. Some of the boarding houses I've been staying at, they're quite expensive. Uh, the one I'm at now, uh, it's a 
it's a bit pricey. It's two fifty a week, and then you got your living expenses on top of that, like your food and things like that. The tough thing about Gab's situation is that through all of this, he has never stopped working. He has a casual labour job that means he can't forecast how much he'll earn and how much he can save. Right now he's earning too much to qualify for government benefits, but not enough to get himself off the street. But my job's not stable because there's weather, there's things not ready and things like that. So that's where I struggle. It's just one of those things where, OK, something goes wrong. We have to wait another three to four days before we can go back onto that job just to fix it or finish it. What I've worked out, if you can't pay rent, they just kick you straight out. So that's the thing that you've got to try and work with. What's in there? Is that your sleeping bag? Isn't yeah. it? Got to improvise, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Paul will be the first to tell you that a car full of oranges and second-hand clothes won't fix things for Gav and people in his situation. A lot of people are very, very isolated. And by having connection with people like us, it gives them somebody to talk to. Some people, they live on the streets, they stick to themselves, they don't really know anybody. A lot of people don't have any family at all. Hello, my friend. I don't know. <laughs> I see you before. I missed you. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> to be on the street, people just walk past them. And these people that we serve, they're human beings. As many of them as possible, we know their names, you know? We make the connection, we talk to them, we hug them, and they hug us, which is even better, you know? And that's sort of what it's about, really. It, it, it's trying to make people feel like they're, they're important, they're a part of our community, and that community includes them. And this is all of us together. Yeah, what an amazing guy, an incredible uh, work that he's doing there. Not only giving people on the streets much needed items, uh, Joe, but a sense of community and emotional support as well. Oh, absolutely. And I just love that it's individuals taking it upon themselves to go and help other individuals because we're all in this together. Mm. It's so beautiful. It's so powerful that a, a small group of people mm. can have such a powerful effect. Absolutely. So you can find details on how to help Blanket Patrol by going to their Facebook page to see how you can donate much needed blankets, sleeping bags, food whatever you might have that you think is going to help. Lots of essential items there. After the break, we meet a mother and daughter who share their homeless experience. All coming up on The House of Wellness. Yeah, welcome back. Before the break, we took a look at a number of Australians sleeping rough on the streets each night and the great work of Blanket Patrol to help provide some warmth this winter. Yes, but rough sleepers are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to homelessness. It can be a vicious cycle with many people stuck and not knowing how to get out. And here to tell us more, welcome Sharon Mamo and your beautiful daughter Montana. Hello. Hello. Hey, welcome, yeah. guys. Guys, first up, can hey. I just ask you a little bit about your personal experience with homelessness? Sure. So for Montana and I, um, we were um, one of the 93% of the invisible or the hidden homeless um, that you don't really see. Um, so, you know, when we're out in the streets and we see the 7% of homeless, they're the people that are sleeping rough. Mm. Um, as you mentioned earlier, it's women and children who are often um, fleeing from domestic violence that uh, are... Um, in the cohort that's increasing. And so that for us was a similar experience. And mm -hmm. um, we uh, arrived home one day to find that the locks on our doors had been changed um, and we had no home. Um, and so from there we went and lived in, moved to a caravan. And then after that, there was some couch surfing with family. Mm -hmm. um, and it was devastating. Um, you know, to be homeless is one thing, but to be homeless with your child, mm -hmm. teenage daughter, um, was just absolutely devastating. Um, the feeling of rejection, um, hopelessness, um, yeah, it just really throws you. So, Montana, you were going to school at this time. Yes. And experiencing homelessness. Yes. How was that? It was tough. It was, um, you know, it was hard to concentrate on schooling and concentrate on friends. Um, I actually remember sitting in health class and the topic of the class was homelessness mm. and they were really talking about the stigma and discrimination that homeless people face. So, you know, things like um, they're just lazy, they can oh. just get a job, you know, they're not worth your help sort of thing, like just talking about that. And I just in that moment realised that I wasn't going to speak up 
and I kept it hidden. Mm. Can we strip it back a little bit? Yeah. And basically, homelessness means someone who doesn't have a, have a suitable or secure form of accommodation. Mm -hmm. What does that exactly mean for many people? For many people, um, that means not having a roof over their head, um, not a stable roof over their head, so they're either not able to pay rent um, or don't have a mortgage or don't have um, anybody that they can move in with and rent with. Um, so there isn't any security from day to day. Um, it's not knowing where you're going to live next week. So Montana, having experienced that in your most formative years, what, what has that done for the woman that you are today? Yeah, so if I think back to sort of my experiences while homeless, um, there were a lot of negative um, sort of results, you know, low self-worth, mm. like severe anxiety, because um, you're always having to have your guard up thinking that something bad was going to happen again. Mm. Um, especially yeah, being a teenager, your sort of teenage years are stripped and you're sort of forced to become an adult really quickly. But in saying that, it's made me the woman who I am and the resilience that I do have now, so, yeah. Well, if the end result is how you present yourself today, <laughs> yes. Montana, you are sensational. It's, a, it's an incredible story to share with hey, you. Sharon, you. can I ask you about, you know, a lot of people uh, have got a, a picture of what homelessness means. Why do people end up homeless? Um, so definitely, you know, a lack of affordable housing um, and that is increasing, um, that, uh, and that's all over Australia, not just in Melbourne. Um, inability to gain and sustain employment, mental health issues, mm. substance issues, um, disability within the home, um, and of course, um, you know, that's intellectual disability and medical disability. Uh, however, they're the causes, but then what happens with homelessness is that there's an effect mm. um, and those conditions are exacerbated and they might not have many of these issues and might simply just have had to flee because of violence, family violence. And, you know, 40% of our youth at the moment are fleeing um, their homes because of family violence. Uh, but what happens is, is that there's such a rejection around that and then to be outside on the streets or couch surfing there's such a lack of what the human nature needs and that is you know to be supported and to be around people um, so rejection is a huge one and that's when the mental health mm. conditions start to exacerbate and the addiction and the substance mm. abuse and Montana can I ask you you know obviously life's looking great and, and uh, a yeah. great story to tell how did it turn around what was the moment for you that turned it all around Sorry, it's a tough question because mm. I feel like it's really um, all thanks to my mum. Mm. I mean... Um, That's beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm lucky that I experienced homelessness with my mother as a lot of our youth. I can't even imagine how scary it is for our homeless youth. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was my, the strongest woman I know here that turned everything around for us. Sharon, tell us a little yep. bit about that story, what, what turned it around. Well, I'd had experience with uh, disadvantage in my own life. Um, so I came from three generations at least of trauma and women. And um, so as a result, I had a, a substance dependency um, for many years. And mm -hmm. so I came back from that. Um, so I really had to recall what that was. And, um, you know, if I tried to quickly um, pin that down, um, uh, uh, developing self-awareness, I really needed to look at what was happening um, and take a, a really serious look at what was going on. Um, from there, um, I had to um, find a why, like why did I need to do this and you know this was my why mm. as my child, there's no yeah. other bigger why than <laughs> your child, yes. right? Yes. Um, so that was my why and my reason to do that. Meditation, I started meditating and I meditated for, you know, and I still do 30 to 40 minutes mm -hmm. a day and then lots of counsellors and support, yeah. a financial counsellor, mm -hmm. you know, a psychologist, a counsellor and the counsellor gave you, give you all the tools that you, um, that you know, you need such as CBT. BT and ABC and the three C's and six R's. <laughs> <laughs> all the letters. All the letters. You know, so I wrote it down in my journal and, yeah. and, I, did, yeah. and I did what I was instructed. Yeah. Um, and I guess lastly, I heard you mention gratitude mm. in the morning. And um, so what we do is we actually do an accomplishments journal. So we've both studied neuroscience um, as a result of um, our journey. And um, wow. yeah. <laughs> so, so we now know that with, uh, with meditation, and with the brain, um, the limbic system is the, the part of the brain that sometimes we can't control. 
Um, so if we complete an accomplishment journal every day, a little bit like a gratitude mm -hmm. journal, um, that actually produces the dopamine so yes. that we can aim yes. for more of what it is that we want to accomplish. Mm. So it's not so much the goals, mm. it's that we're achieving the goals that drives the dopamine in the brain. Truly amazing. So, but then through all of this incredible work and that resilience that you mentioned, Montana, Sharon, creating new pathways, this is what you've started. Can you explain to us exactly what that is and how that's assisting disadvantaged people? Mm. So creating new pathways is actually creating new neural pathways. So it's around neuroplasticity. That's why um, it's called creating new pathways. And we work one-on-one -on -one with dis disadvantaged people who are mandated to uh, get counselling. And we provide them with counselling, um, psychotherapy, um, addictions counselling. It's all based on neurology or neurobiology. Um, and as well as that, we also do um, presentations around the country together. So it's a mother and daughter and we talk mm. about um, our history um, and how we've come through this. And we do that with corporate um, and professional development seminars. So working with people who work with disadvantage mm -hmm. um, and the focus is on changing the way that people think through neuro neurobiology. You two have got to be two of the most inspiring <laughs> souls I've ever met. I've got to say it. It is so beautiful to have you here. Where else can people get support apart from your, what you're wonderfully doing? Um, so we work with Melbourne City Mission here in Melbourne um, for youth homelessness, but there's a really good app um, called Ask Izzy. Mm -hmm. um, so Ask Izzy, I double Z Y. Um, yep. And with Ask Izzy, it's actually a mobile app that can be used on your phone uh, and, and you can pretty much locate any service immediately. Mm -hmm. um, and for anybody that's experiencing domestic violence, um, there's a feature on that where you can actually flip the, the app so that the person who, or the perpetrator, doesn't actually know that you're wow. um, accessing the, the app. That is incredible. Mm. It's so powerful. Yeah, organisations like yours along with the Salvos, uh, Blanket Patrol and many more are doing such great work to support uh, uh, people experiencing homelessness. So go online now to find out how you can support them. Big thanks Sharon and Montana. Really appreciate uh, you sharing your story with us this morning. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much Thank for having you. us. Stick around. There's plenty more to come right here on the House of Wellness. Hey, welcome back. Uh, Joe. would you say that you have a good memory? Well, the interesting thing about memory, Darce, is... <laughs> oh, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I have a I terrible love memory. <laughs> terrible memory. How about you, Rach and Heinze? Would you say that you're both good problem solvers? Ooh. Problem solvers. I feel like I'm a good problem solver for the problems I want to solve. I wish I was a good problem solver because I would have worked out how to deal with working with Gerald. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to Gerald in a moment. Sleep Awareness Week is just wrapped up in Australia. This year's theme is Sleep On It, Memory and Problem Solving. Mm. And this depends a lot on getting a good night's sleep. Now, we've chatted uh, a lot about this in the House of Wellness before and how beneficial it is for your health, how important getting a good night's sleep is. In fact, mm. a few weeks mm. back, we looked at snoring and sleep apnea. Yes, that's right. Now, I mentioned that my husband's a shocking snorer yes. and I had read that one way you can manage it is by sewing a tennis ball oh. into the back of their pyjamas <laughs> so it? they can't roll onto their back. Well, I can't sew, Rach, so I just popped it in there and then we lost the ball. Daisy, the dogs are done. We're thought. still looking for it. How's that going know. for your relationship, uh, Joe? <laughs> Look, the snoring is not good for any relationship, let me oh. tell you that, but sometimes sleep disorders can be much rarer and they're no laughing matter. <laughs> Since I was really young, I've been doing things in my sleep, so I tend to act out my dreams. Paige Palavan was only 10 years old when this first began. My sister stormed in my room in the middle of the night and was like, what are you doing? And I was tapping the wall to her bedroom because in my dream, I was dreaming that I was looking for a hidden passage. I don't really remember specific situations after that until I was about 21, and then it's been quite constant since then. Each time Paige has one of these parasomnias, they're quite different. I think my husband would say the strangest one I've done is um, standing at the edge of the bed and just watching him, uh, which is a bit creepy, but quite often it is just me in the bed kind of tapping around. The worst one recently was when I um, saw a snake behind my bed. 
Um, and I shot up and just immediately started bawling my eyes out and screaming in the bed. And so it's really quite a surreal situation because I wake up the next morning and I can recollect that I've done something. But when I did it, I didn't know that I did it. Like I couldn't stop doing it. It's also the randomness of when they occur that Paige finds hard. The consistency of it happening changes, so it's very dependent on other things, like I guess lifestyle factors you'd say. So I can relate it to stress and sleep deprivation. So it, the worst part is, particularly if I get more tired, so if I start to do it one night, it makes me tired. And then that then brings it on again the next night and it can go in a cycle like that. Or it could be a one-off time where it just happens. However, it's not just Paige that is affected by her parasomnias. I feel really sorry for my husband because he doesn't understand it, but he has to experience it. And quite often I'll just be like patting his head or slapping him on the head. And I feel bad for him as much as I feel bad for me. Dr Cunnington is a sleep expert in parasomnias and can diagnose such conditions through a sleep study. It's unusual for someone to have a parasomnia when they come into the sleep laboratory. I'm going to pop this around you. Give you a hug. But what some of the things we look for in a sleep study are increases in muscle activity. So for example, here where there's increase in some muscle activation, these are examples of times when parasomnias could be occurring. For Paige though, living day to day with the condition can take its toll. I'd like to know I'm not crazy. Like I feel crazy sometimes and people look at me and you know, they're fascinated by it and it's different. But for me, it's not fascinating. It's inconvenient and it's sometimes scary and people don't really understand it. And I've never really been able to find anyone else who has it. House of Wellness's own favourite sleep physician, Dr. David Cunnington is back to tell us a bit more. Welcome, David. Thank you. Hey, explain uh, that last time we uh, caught up, 1.5 million Aussies have some kind of sleep disorder, but you said around 40% might underestimate the extent of their problem. Can you explain what we just saw and, and what that means? So this particular sleep disorder fits into a category called parasomnias. So think of that as doing things during sleep. Paige gave a really good description of an example of a non-REM parasomnia. So these behaviours can be sleepwalking, can be sleep talking, night terrors is another version of that, or getting up and eating and doing other behaviours during sleep. And it's actually about two in a hundred adults can have this type of disorder. Paige did a really nice job too of talking about how it really has an impact. In families often it's a bit of a joke, the sleepwalking thing but it actually really impacts on relationships and impacts on how people function and during Dave, the day. And Dave, that's one condition. What, are there any other conditions that we may not know about aside from parasomnia? Yeah, there's many different sleep disorders. So the common ones we've talked about before, so problems with breathing during sleep, like snoring and sleep apnea. But there are other conditions where people are just sleepy. Even though they sleep well, they're still sleepy. Mm -hmm. So they're called hypersomnias, and narcolepsy is one type of that. There's insomnias, which we've talked a bit about before, about can't get to sleep, can't stay asleep. Mm -hmm. There are movement disorders during sleep, like restless legs syndrome. Uh, and there are other troubles with sleep, such as the body clock. We've talked a little bit about light and the effect on the body clock, mm. but they can be a major issue for people as well. This must have a huge impact on those that are experiencing this, but what about the people who are living with them as well, as we saw in Pager's circumstances? What about those people? And that's really underestimated, because sleep is often a shared experience, yeah. and it can really impact on the person who's on the other side of the bed, yep. not just snoring, <laughs> but imagine if instead of it being snoring, it's fear of being attacked. And there was tapping and there was movement movement yeah. and rubbing, all sorts of physical yeah. touch. I find and it quite scary. It can be really disconcerting, as well as people can have a sense of fear. And also, once this starts to happen, the person who's doing it starts to not want it to happen, and it mm. becomes a thing, and then the partner doesn't want it to happen, it seems to escalate and just become a real problem for people. Yeah. yeah. So, if someone is affected by parasomnia, what can they do? Yeah. So it's really important to talk to their healthcare professional, because there are things we can do. As you saw in the package, there are ways we diagnose these, there are ways we manage it. So don't suffer in silence or don't think it's something you've got to fix as a couple together. Yeah, seek some help. Mm. David, sleep's such a massive issue for people. Getting a good night's sleep is uh, one of the great health uh, things that you can achieve. So thanks for coming in and helping us all hopefully to sleep a little better.
Pleasure. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate Dr. David, as always. Up next, tech guru Vanessa is in the house to give us some tips on how we can hit that snooze button. Welcome back. It's Sleep Awareness Week, and today we're looking at some great ways to get the right amount of sleep. Vanessa, who showed us some snoring and sleep talking apps a few weeks back, what have you got today, Vanessa? Look, it's such a vibrant space, and one amazing product on the market at the moment is the Bose uh, Sleep buds that you can put in. Now rather than having some earbuds listening to your own music, what they've decided is that we need almost a noise cancelling feature like we use on airlines yes, and things, yes. but um, using really soothing sounds like rain pattering or Ooh. the wind blowing or a fire Ooh. crackling and having those carefully attuned to our surrounds so that they can opt out all the sounds that we don't want to hear. Would you hear a crying baby or...? I believe they do not block out normal human sound. So if someone's yelling fire, okay. you'll be safe. It is safe, OK. Yes. What about pillows? Now, I become quite obsessed with my pillow. I need exactly the right plump, not too much, not too little. Same. I need it the exact right condition and the right sort of position. <laughs> Joe, have you considered a smart pillow? Because we have smart well, everything these I days. I think my pillow is quite dumb. So, sure. <laughs> so what is a smart pillow? Look, if you had a smart pillow, hopefully you would get some extra benefits from it. It could play you music and then be timed to fade out just at the point that you think you want to go so to it's sleep. got speakers in the pillow. You could have speakers in your pillow. Mm. It could also be attuned to your movements and your sound. So if it detected maybe some snoring type behaviours, mm. what does this Zeke Smart Pillow by Remfit can do is vibrate and help trigger you into moving position, <gasps> oh hopefully unconstricting your airways. So, gosh, my husband needs that. A, pi <laughs> a pillow that wakes you up. How perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I prefer something a little bit more zen because I try and eliminate as many elements from my bedroom and environment as possible. Have you got anything a little bit more relaxing? Sure. So something you might enjoy, which could also help with meditation or getting to sleep in a really mindful way, is the DreamFit mask. So what the mask can do is sit really comfortably on your face and use pulsing orange lights to time your breathing. You can sync your breathing to this and you can ease into sleep. So it's it's called the Dream Light Mask. Okay. Uh -huh. A Dream Light Pro. So even. it's like a facial kind of thing for sleep. It looks a bit like a VR mask, except a lot more oh, comfortable. It's all padded. <laughs> Sounds terrific. No, it's, all, <laughs> it's all padded and soft and very luxe looking. Okay. It's the sort of thing if you're in first class, so I imagine I hate, you wear. When it gets late at night, mm. I hate bright lights. And mm. I get really, you know, get into bed. One of the kids comes and flicks a switch mm. and puts the, uh, mm. you know, the studio lights on. Is there a way? Can you come to my house, Vanessa, and stop that somehow? <laughs> Look, I think you just need this mask. You know, you don't need me. This will, yeah. this will okay. wrap carefully around your face and you'll be all fine. I just don't know how we ever got to sleep 10 years ago before <laughs> any of this technology. <laughs> well, a know? lot of the technology is thinking for us now and having sleep mode. So if you can put devices into sleep mode and that will help you ease in. Thank you, Vanessa. Yeah. Always uh, enlightening to discuss uh, with you what's going on in the world of technology. Now, one man I know jumps out of bed every morning is uh, GQ, Big Gerald, behind oh. the house bar. <laughs> oh, I thought I was jumping out of bed, Darth. It's the man next to you. Have a look. Oh, hello. It's funny, Darth, how <laughs> sleep has become so complicated and so technical and and one hint I give people is to try and set a sleep time set a time for bed and stick to it no matter what so if you've got visitors and I have been known to do this go and get into your pyjamas come back and say good night <laughs> <laughs> I've heard your pyjamas match your shirts and they're all pink from yeah, look, head to it, toe. It helps me sleep, but it's one it way. But it's just a state, you know, we're in a 24-hour society these days, yeah. aren't we? So we go, go, go all the time. So naturally there's a build-up of tension and stress and got to do it but in your brain constantly. Sometimes I struggle to wind down, as Rachel was saying, about screen time, but also my body is a bit sore. So how can we ease an aching body to help us sleep. The classic mineral, uh, Heinze, is magnesium. So it acts as about 300 biochemical reactions that magnesium works on. And it okay. works mainly in muscles and tendons and ligaments. And it, it works superbly in your shoulders and your neck because that's where most of the tension... You're going to have a massage. And the masseur will say, oh, gee, you've got lots of tension in your shoulders. You're very stiff. So magnesium, if you think pain, tension, stress, cramps... Uh, then magnesium is the ideal thing. We were talking about magnesium a few weeks ago and I got the chance to say that dark chocolate is a fantastic Perfect. source of yeah. magnesium. Mm. What other foods are high in magnesium? Well, if you put dark chocolates around nuts, so cashews and almonds, Yum. then it's a perfect combination. Yes. But there's quinoa and spinach 
and some fortified breakfast cereals as well. So, the, look, all of these things are important, um, but really it, it's the, the, the important thing is to look at foods that we know are magnesium rich. All right, so that's our muscles taken care yeah. of. What about switching off a busy mind? Herbs are ideal, and we're surrounded by gentle herbs. And there are three that are magnificent. The Rolls Royce is passion flower. Okay. Like a name like passion flower, you've got to think, slow down, relax, get into the sleep mode with a fixed time for bed, because it relieves tension, stops that busy mind. And you know there are people who get anxious, worrying about whether they'll get to sleep or not. Wow. So they're going to bed stressed. And it perpetuates it. Totally. Okay. Uh, and the second one is hops. Hang on, hops. So what you're telling me is I can have a good big beer before bed. No, I thought you'd pick up on. No, it's a different, a different hop. So is the this hops. It here? No, this, this. Well, yes, that's the hops herb, yeah. but that comes from the part of the herb which is called a strobial, a bit like a, a pine cone. Okay. And the hops in beer is the tips of the hops, so it's a little different. The hops plant, so it is different. A beer before bed, not a good idea. It's a diuretic, obviously. But hops tends to, again, settle a busy mind. So we're talking hops, passion flower. Who would be good to take this combination? And don't forget Zisyphus, which oh. is the other one, which is the traditional Chinese medicine uh, herb. Zisyphus. Zisyphus, okay. hard to say, yep. especially if you're half asleep. Zisyphus, Korean and Chinese medicine. And, uh, but, but that's the... So who can take it? A person who just is anxious about sleeping, a person who is behind a steering wheel all day or at a computer keyboard all day where you're bending over, that person who is wired for everything when they should be becoming unwired in the busyness of the day. You are a good man. Thank you, Gerald. The A to Z of Vitamins is brought to you by Go Healthy, New Zealand's number one premium supplement brand now available in Australia. Welcome back. It is Sleep Awareness Week and we have been looking at ways to get a good night's sleep. One way, Joe, if you want to avoid a good night's sleep is mm. probably to have a baby. Oh, don't. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Don't have me. <laughs> the only one on the couch. Do not do it if you ever plan to sleep again. Yeah. That's correct, Dust. Oh. You'd know you've got four. Have you slept in the no, entire no. time you've had this? <laughs> Pretty much not. No. <laughs> the 16-year-old still wakes me up. Man, what's he doing? Oh. And of course, becoming a new parent is a magical time, but for pregnant mums or even women who are trying to conceive, it's also a time of massive change physically, emotionally and mentally. Yeah, right. there, there are changes in our mood, our mm. body shape, our appetite and this oversupply of conflicting advice. It's just... Oh. It's, it's true. overwhelming. And people unsolicited telling you things. <laughs> when, and especially if it's your first baby, you don't know how to decide what is right for you because you've never felt this way before. Yeah. It's very difficult. Do you so. know, I reckon, Joe, one of the worst things you can do at Mother's Group is to turn up and talk about how your baby sleeps. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> like, You'll be dismissed. Like throwing a hand smart. grenade at <laughs> Mother's Group, that one. It is true. So this week we turned to the pregnancy experts to separate the dietary must-haves from the myths. I didn't change my diet or anything to fall pregnant um, because it, you don't know how long it's going to take. So yeah. I just wanted to keep doing whatever I was doing, exercising the same amount, eating the same foods. The only difference was taking the supplements. When you're trying to get pregnant, you should be really focusing on just a really whole foods diet, making sure you're getting all the required nutrients. You really need to focus on your folate, your calcium, your iodine and your iron. I was on a water and lemon diet for about 20 weeks, just because the taste of lemon or the sourness was the only thing that could get rid of the nausea. That's all I could stand. So if women are struggling with morning sickness in their first trimester, it's really important to take a nutritional supplement. Um, you can also do other things throughout your diet, like a lot of people have success with smoothies, soups, things like that that are just a lot easier to digest. My husband loves Indian food. He's obsessed with Indian food and I can't stand it. <laughs> but the weird thing is the other day I was craving Indian food. Really? I thought this was bizarre. So I drove to the nearest Indian restaurant, ordered some samosas. I called my husband and I said, this baby's definitely yours. <laughs> it loves the Indian food. So. So there is a common myth around cravings and that you are missing out on certain nutrients, but there is actually no scientific evidence to back that up. So um, it could be hormonal changes that are causing that. It could be nutritional deficiencies. They don't know. My 
mum, she's on the old school of thought where you can't even run or jump when you're pregnant. <laughs> and I'm like, no, mum, I can still go to gym and lift weights. I can go to the park and kick the footy. I'm going skiing next week. You know, so there are a lot of old wives' tales, yeah, but it's important to remember that times are changing and new information is coming out. So it's always best to um, chat to your doctor and, you know, find out sort of what foods you should be eating, what exercise you should be doing that is specific for your own body. So, Rach, any cravings when you were pregnant? Oh, yeah. With, with Violet, it was funny talking about the morning sickness because with both kids, I had morning sickness severely until about 15 weeks. Mm. And the only thing that I could stomach was dry, crispy crackers mm. and, like, starchy white food. Yes. And I rarely eat that. I'm very much, you know, vegetables, plant-based diet. And so... Until about 15 weeks, I was pretty much consuming only that. So I did also take a multivitamin just to make sure I was getting everything. But Vegemite. Oh, Vegemite. I just really wanted Vegemite on my rice crackers. Maybe oh, that's wow. a vitamin B thing. <laughs> I don't salt? know. I just could not get enough chocolate milkshakes. <laughs> <laughs> Consequently, I put on 30 kilos. So 30? Wow. That's a lot of milkshakes. <laughs> oh, my God. I just love that. dairy bell. Anyway, uh, <laughs> next week, Sarah will be back to look at the second trimester and we'll meet some more excited, expectant mums. Well, I'm looking forward to that. To Joe, but right now, here's Zoe to add to those cravings with a twist on the classic taco. I love taking an old favourite and giving it a healthy twist. That is why my fish tacos with beautiful turmeric and cauliflower tortillas are perfect. This is a store-bought cauliflower rice, and the idea is that you've really got to steam it and then squeeze all the extra liquid, and you can see just how much is actually coming out of this. Cauliflower right now, it's bang on trend. So just break that up with your fingers. Now, I'm also gonna add a little bit of wholemeal flour, and then I'm gonna add my two eggs. I'll just give this a little bit of a mix with my spoon. And then the last ingredient I'm going to add is turmeric. The reason why turmeric is so wonderful as a nutrient, it's a big anti-inflammatory. As a root vegetable alone, you won't absorb the curcumin. So by adding what this product actually has in it, the pepper and the good fats, whiz bang, it's all there for you. Not to mention the colour. The colour is so dynamic and gorgeous. Now I'm going to roll this into a ball, I'm going to flatten them out and I'm going to pop them in the oven. The salsa is made with jalapenos, garlic, tomatoes, chilli and, of course, avocado. I'm such a fan of having fresh, beautiful, dynamic green ingredients in my salsa. Squeeze your lime in here and give it a good mix through. I'm going to pop my fish on and then it's all about layering and eating. All my components are ready. I've got store-bought coleslaw. Pop that on. I've got a little bit of my beautiful fish. Oh, it smells so good. Lots of the salsa. This has definitely got me in a fiesta type of mood. Welcome back. Sport has changed dramatically in the past few years, even since uh, I was playing. It seems like a lifetime ago. Now, there's more pressure to train harder, go faster, be stronger. And in the news in recent weeks, there has been some unsettling reports surrounding ingredients and supplements and how this is affecting elite athletes. So many supplements on the market. How do we know it's safe and certified? Our own expert is uh, Gerald by the bar there. What advice have you got, Gerald? It's really tough, isn't it, Dust, that we want to go bigger, stronger, and it affects all levels of people involved in sports. So the elite sports person, all the way down to perhaps the 15, 16, 17-year-old who's striving to improve. Important things to look for on the label. And one is the little message which has got AUSTEL, A-U-S-T-L, which means it's a registered medicine for Australia or a registered supplement. Oh. And the other, to ensure it's clean, is an informed sports logo. It's a little logo, and that's a world-class accreditation which shows it's been tested for all banned substances. Oh. So those two things you look for 
in Australia. Yeah, great advice. And I think the thing that people don't quite understand sometimes, guys, if it's in your system, if you bought a supplement from overseas and it says that the ingredients are fine, if that has been contaminated, that, that batch, you are out for four years, oh. no matter what. There is no defence at all. So what Jared's saying, you have to do your homework, know that that batch is certified and is going to be OK. And, you know, we've seen in recent times athletes that are saying, hey, I did take mm. a supplement. There is, uh, you know, a contamination of the batch. You have no excuse. If it's in your system, Mm. Your, hey, what did we make of um, Mac Horton's stance recently, guys? It was cr pretty powerful, mm. I thought. I think uh, it's wonderful that he's showing that strength to say, you know what, I want a clean sport no yep. matter what. I believe what's happening here in China isn't just for what we're doing. Mm. So I'm going to stand aside. And, of course, the sports bodies are trying to be careful in regards to this having a flow-on effect and, and more kind of protests. But I thought it was very powerful. Mm. Oh, yeah, such courage. Because, you know, he's pretty conspicuous standing there and there's yeah. a lot of people not liking him for it. So I'm, I, I think it's amazing. Yeah, huge yeah. admiration for it. It's cost him sponsors. It's yep. cost him, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, I suppose, money, essentially. But he's standing up for what he believes, knowing that there's going to be a cost. You know, it's going to be fascinating. Olympics, you know, less than 12 months mm -hmm. away now. Uh, that uh, rivalry building into, you know, the Japan Olympics is going to be really fascinating. Mm. And funny on the supplement side of things. I love supplements. I take a few of them, travelling a lot and also... So training really early in the morning, I find them super helpful. But a lot of people email me and ask me, what supplements should I be taking? And my first port of advice is actually, let's start with real food first. Yeah. Mm. Because you don't want to be just using them to prop you up. They shouldn't be crutches for you to walk. You mm. should learn how to walk first with real food, good sleep, nutrition and mindset. And then if you're lacking something, then look into a supplementation for something that you might be lacking and then fuel your body and go the next level. Yeah, but as you said, Darcy, if you're on that elite level... Yeah. You just got to be sure. Yeah. You can't take a risk. Yeah. I mean, it gives you a perspective on how committed elite athletes are because yeah. it takes over your entire life. Whereas, mm. you know, people like me, we don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm flying today. Yeah. Great. I remember playing with guys that would have five nuts a week, not six, not seven or wow. four, because they'd measured their diet that they were only going to have five cashews. That's the sort of wow. you know, detail size. you're going into. Yeah. That's it for us on the House of Wellness this week. You can find more info on anything from today's show on our website, House of Wellness. Wellness.com.au. Don't forget to tune into our radio show every Sunday. And as always, thanks to our good friends at Chemist Warehouse. We'll see you next week. Beautiful.